Well, I saw the movie back in, I was in high school in 1952. Alan Ladd portrayed Jim Bowie in The Iron Mistress. In the end of the movie, throws this beautiful Bowie knife into the Mississippi River. And of course, I about had a heart attack. I had to have a Bowie knife, so. I, my first love was with the Bowie knife. I saw a knife that a self-defense instructor had made, and I thought, well, heck, if he made one, I can make one. So I made a buoy, and uh, I still have it. I threw it away once, but uh, we got it out of the garbage. <laughs> I sold my first knife in 57 when I got out of the Navy. Kind of was a part-time knife maker till 64, then I went full-time. Like anybody that follows the dreams, you have ups and downs, but uh, I've met a lot of great people. Been in the White House, presented uh, Vice President Quayle, one of our Rambo three knives, and went in the presidential archives. And I've been in Elvis Presley's home, I'm just a knife maker, and I had great uh, aspirations to become a dentist, but I wasn't smart enough. So I turned to my craft, uh, which I enjoyed, and golly, we, uh, through the internet, we sell knives all over the world. This is the shop that Rambo built. That was one of my big opportunities that came along. I met Sylvester Stallone at a knife show in California. He walked up, he said, I've been waiting to meet you. And it kind of surprised me. I said, well, I'm waiting to meet you. Anyway, he bought some knives from me and um, I told him I'd like to work with him in the future. And he said, uh, I'll give you a call. And by golly, he did. He uh, called me and I got to do Rambo 3 and Rambo 4, Expendables 1, 2, and 3. So Sly did me a, a big thing when I um, got involved with him. It was like I was an overnight success after making knives 40 years. Well, I cut each one of mine out on a metal cutting bandsaw, and it's all freehand. I don't have any jigs, any automatic grinders. Uh, everything's done completely by me and by hand. Um, I, I've had apprentices. I have a couple part-time apprentices now that come in and help me, and I usually delegate them to the bandsaw <laughs> and maybe the buffers where we can bring up the mirror polish. And when we, when we grind it, then we, after we heat treat it, then we grind it again and keep reducing the belt grits till it gets finer and finer and finer and finer. And when it gets down to almost a 1200 grit, then we go into the buffers and we can bring up the mirror polish on. I was the first guy, first custom maker to mirror polish back in the 50s. I like to take knives beyond a knife, so that puts me in making art. And I love making art pieces. Uh, something different, something unusual. I'd go to a knife show, I'd like to have a special knife in the center of the table, maybe just to get attention. But uh, usually sell them eventually. <laughs> One of the guys in the fire station there in New York City, Keith Kaiser, contacted me and seven other knife makers. And after 9-11, uh, he lost like 13 of his firefighters. And a couple of them were knife collectors. So Keith had the idea that um, we all make a knife and we donate it made out of a piece of the I-beams, one of the supports in the World Trade Center. And he sent me 12 inches, you know, a square, this thing was square when I got it. It's a half inch thick, you know, it's been in the fire. He cut it out with a cutting torch. Anyway, they were, we were supposed to all make a knife and donate it. 
and uh, we were going to auction it off and uh, the money would go to the families of the firehouse. I've influenced a lot of knife makers over the 50 plus years I've been doing it and teaching. So I probably have the biggest family tree of knife makers than anybody still alive. In a way, it's a passion for me to make them. And then there's the knife collectors. It's a passion for him to collect them. I have two sons that are following me. I have my oldest son who lives in Anchorage, Alaska, West. And now he's designing for United Cutlery. Uh, excellent, excellent knife maker. And uh, my son Derek, who works here with me, does my leather work. And uh, so I've got two sons. And um, I just had my 79th birthday, so I'm looking at 80 next September. And, you know, I'm feeling pretty good, but I think the future of this company is as long as I can walk down here to the shop, it'll be going and uh, pretty much convince my son West to move about out of Alaska and come down and take over my shop. So him and I will hopefully go for quite a while.